Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I own the water store in Midland, Ontario. Every area has common water characteristics. Uh, families can get water from the municipality, they can get water from their wells, they can get water from uh, drawing it from a, a river or a lake, but again, the concerns are often quite similar. So what I'm showing here today is uh, a number of common water quality concerns in the southern Georgian Bay area. So you can check them out, see if you have any of these concerns about your water, and also learn more about what's causing the concern and what it's going to take to remedy the situation. Here is an example of hard water staining. Whether you get your water from a well or from the municipality, the number one reason people call me is due to water stains, usually caused by hard water and or iron. Actually, to be honest, wives make their husbands call me to get this fixed. Another example of hard water is foggy glasses like this one when removed from the dishwasher. This is a common concern and is caused by layer after layer of hard water coating the glass. It's pretty obvious which glass you'd prefer to drink from, especially when filled with wine. Are your shower heads stained and getting clogged? As the calcium magnesium that makes up the hard water fills in the holes in your shower head, water flow slows down and eventually stops altogether. Hard, hard water causes far more damage in side pipes and fixtures where you can't see the damage than it does where you can see it. Does the inside of your kettle look like this? The scale building up layer after layer inside your kettle is a common symptom of hard water and the number one cause of death to your Tassimo or Keurig. Ever notice that unless you dry every drop of water off your car, you end up with water spots? Yep, that's hard water. When water from your lawn sprinkler or hose hits your windows and is allowed to dry in place, the calcium and magnesium that makes up hardness is, is left behind as the water dries causing those lovely water spots that are tough to remove. This is a soap test I conducted in my store. Equal amounts of soap drops are added to equal amounts of hard and soft water and then shaken. This picture shows the soap scum below the water line in the hard water and the suds created by the soft water. Hard water contains calcium and magnesium ions which react with the fatty acid component of soap to give what are technically called lime soaps. Lime soaps are ineffective in washing dishes or clothes or hair. Thus, hard water needs large amounts of soap to form a lather, and this soap scum sticks to your hair and clothes. Soap scum coats every fiber of your laundry, causing your clothes to become dingy, stiff, and causes the fibers to become brittle and break. Towels washed with soft water are softer, fluffier, and last longer. Rarely do you see the damage caused by hard water inside your hot water tank or the heating element in your dishwasher. The efficiency of both of these units drops off significantly, costing you far more money as it takes far more energy to heat the water through this scale. With soft water, no scale builds up, so your hot water heater stays as efficient as it was on the first day it was installed for its entire life. If you're thinking about installing a tankless hot water heater anywhere throughout our region, make sure your water is soft first. According to the specs of every tankless hot water heater manufacturer, this is a must, otherwise it will fail. During a life cycle simulation of tankless hot water heaters on hard water, they became blocked nine times during a 15 year test. Heat exchanges routinely fail with hard water. Dishwashers are so dependent on soft water for great results and long service life High-end Miele dishwashers have their own water softener built in. As you can see from this cutaway of a water softener, all of your household water flows down through the media, which softens your water. Chlorine in the municipal water ensures our water is bacteria-free, but creates many other problems and smells terrible too. Whether you choose a standard or money-saving high-efficiency water softener to deal with these concerns, you'll save money in the process. Your water does not to be, need to be discolored for you to get iron staining. Clear water iron is very common in this area. This picture shows a rather extreme example of iron staining, but you get the idea. It's very demoralizing trying to keep bathrooms clean with this kind of staining. Yes, so much iron can build up inside a pipe to severely restrict the flow until all flow stops.
toilets become a mess but can actually become plugged from iron buildup alone. How about your fence? If your home has a built-in irrigation system, often that water can be run through the household iron sulfur filter. That keeps the fence, siding, walkways, and even your neighbor's white car or cat iron free. Does that rotten egg smell bother you? That smell is sulfur gas in your water. It's very unpleasant and corrosive. The way to remove iron and or sulfur is basically the same and can often be, be removed with one process. Discoloration like this in your water can be iron but most likely is tannins. Tannins are caused by rotting vegetation tinting water much like tea tints water. In this area rotting cedar roots are prime sources of tannins. Tannins can only be removed by, you guessed it, a tannin filter. Although there are a few important differences, a tannin filter looks, acts, and works exactly like a water softener. Yes, and they use salt too. Bacteria in your water is always caused by contaminated surface water. Even if you have a well drilled 200 or more feet deep, if you have bacteria, somehow contaminated surface water is getting into your well and infecting it with bacteria. Common examples of what processes above ground can lead to contamination of your well water underground. Shallow water wells and water drawn from lakes and rivers are far more susceptible to bacteria than deep water wells, but none are immune. Also, as time goes on and your well gets older, it becomes more susceptible to bacteria. This picture shows the basics of how an ultraviolet disinfection system works. A Trojan UV Max, like this one, is a Canadian-made product that is very effective at making your water bacteria free. The bulbs are very easy to change and it always warns you if there's a problem. Does your water taste great? Taste is a very important function of drinking water and can be very subjective. If you are municipal water, chlorine really messes with the taste. In fact, I dare you to drink the wa municipal tap water in Tay Township. On a well, things like sulfur, tannins, and other organics can cause a very undesirable taste. But your well water may taste great but still be bad for you. Drinking water standards state that the water must have at least have less than 500 parts per million of mineral content. However, many local wells which are high in sodium often have water that the owner state tastes great, but because of the mineral content is close to a thousand parts per million. The homeowners literally become filters which can result in kidney and gallstones. Problems with drinking water often are associated with municipalities overchlorinating the water supply to keep it safe from bacteria. THMs or trihalomethanes are caused by a reaction between chlorine and organics in water. There is concern among experts in Canada that THMs may pose a risk in the development of cancer and problems with childbirth. Drinking water taste and PPCPs or pharmaceutical residuals in water are also common issues. People contribute pharmaceuticals and personal care products, or PPCPs, to the environment when medication residues pass through the body and into sewer lines, externally applied drugs and personal care products they use wash down the shower drain, and unused or expired medi medications are placed in the trash or flushed down the toilet. Currently, there are no municipal sewage treatment plants that are engineered specifically for PPCP removal. You have many choices for drinking water, but although all of the drinking water is clear, they are very different as to the potential demons contained with some types of water. Look at the comparison in this chart. Reverse osmosis water was invented by the U.S. Navy during the Second World War to convert seawater into drinking water for submarines. Reverse osmosis takes seawater from 30,000 down to 500 parts per million, which is a reduction of 99% in mineral content. This slide shows how the process works. Reverse osmosis produces water of similar purity to distillation, 
but at a much lower cost. This kind of water treatment is perfect for getting rid of 99% of the contaminants in your drinking water and getting it as close to pure H2O as possible. This is what a home reverse osmosis system looks like. To give you some idea of the size, the tank on the right is about the size of a basketball. This can be installed under the kitchen sink or in the basement. For a reverse osmosis system to work properly, the incoming water needs to be soft, iron-free, and sulfur-free. And that's it. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. That way, you'll be notified of all the new videos that come out, and you can also check some of the older videos in this series. Or you can get more information by going to my, to my website at www.thewaterstoremidland.com. And again, I'm Gary Boitler from The Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Gary the Water Guy, thanks for watching.